Nations. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you All Things Legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Welcome to All Things Legal on Styles FM. Thank you for joining us. It has been my pleasure to share with you in the past five weeks concerning all things legal. I am your host, Janine Lang, attorney at law. Again, our numbers are 876-453-1444 or 954-453. 338-7973. You can call or um, you can text in or WhatsApp in your questions, your comments, your inquiries. Um, we want to hear from you. So our numbers again are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Now, last week, we had a, a pseudo-legal program. You know, um, there were components of medicine in view of the impending coronavirus, COVID-19. And now it is no longer impending. We have welcomed, finally, reluctantly, COVID-19 on our shores here. As of today, we have eight confirmed cases of COVID-19, the coronavirus here in Jamaica. So we will be looking at COVID-19. This week again, we have invited a special guest, a Dr. Anna K. Harvey, and she will be joining us to look at some of your medical questions concerning this virus. Um, so of course, we're going to go into the first segment concerning um, what's in the news, but in the meantime, I want you to think of all the questions that you have for the doctor, any comments that you want to make so that when we get to that segment of our program, we can examine those questions and um, comments. All right, so as usual, we look at certain items which are in the news, topical legal issues, and one that caught my attention, especially even in relation to the COVID-19 is Kemar Bailey, who fled the quarantine facility in Kingston um, this week. Um, we woke up to hear that Kemar Bailey from a St. Mary address had escaped from a quarantine facility. The reports are that the facility allowed him to collect certain items at the gate from a waiting car. And almost like the scene of a movie, it was a getaway car. And Kemar did not want to be in quarantine. So Kemar decided to go away with this um, white Tito motor vehicle. Um, it was about um, 7.30 in the night. And luckily, the police um, was able to catch him about 2 a.m. in the morning in the company of a woman. You know, you know last week we spoke about um, the Quarantine Act and um, the fact that the government has the authority under certain legislations to quarantine and isolate persons if there is an epidemic, uh, you know, a medical epidemic. We also look at the Public Health Act. And this week, the... Gleaner reported that Mr. Bailey may be charged um, for fleeing those quarantine facilities. So it's a very serious matter, not just the corona, but how you respond to it and um, the state's measures to contain it. So Kemar may face a fine of um, 12500 under the Public Health Act or an imprisonment time of um, at least three months um, for trying to flee the quarantine facilities. Of course, the government has indicated that Mr. Bailey does not have the corona, but he was being quarantined for observation pur purposes. You know, our numbers once again are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. That is 876-453-1444 four, 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 
and 954-338-7973. Another item which caught my attention in the news this week, which had some legal um, permutations, concerned this Court of Appeal judgment concerning this car owner in Kingston. Her name is Amy Hyacinth um, Bogle. She had occasion to sue the Transport Authority because the Transport Authority on February 15th, 2011, in fact, nine years ago, um, it is reported that an inspector of the Transport Authority intercepted her and actually drove a Transport Authority motor truck into her, um, her Toyota Mark II and caused a collision and caused damage to her motor vehicle. Her motor vehicle um, was then seized and she was charged for operating without a road license and also uh, uh, operating without PPV um, insurance. Now, the Transport Authority contended that Miss Bogle, they saw Miss Bogle collecting and letting off um, customers of the motor in public and also collecting fares. And of course, she, she had a white plate on this Toyota Mark II. So they said that they had reasonable cause to seize her vehicle and to stop her. Now, the Supreme Court of Jamaica did not agree with the Transport Authority. They found that there were no supportable allegations um, that Miss Bogle was actually operating um, a public passenger vehicle and that the Transport Authority was out of line to charge her for that and to seize her vehicle. Now, Miss Bogle was issued with two summons to go to court. One for operating without the road license and one for operating without the PPV insurance. When she went to court, ultimately the matter, that's traffic court in Kingston, the matter was ultimately thrown out. Um, The Crown dismissed the case for want of evidence. And Ms. Bogo brought a civil suit against the Transport Authority because by this time, even though the court had ordered that her vehicle should be released, Ms. Bogo still does not have her vehicle. So Ms. Bogo instituted proceedings against the Transport Authority for damages. And she won. She got an award of over $10 million and the Transport Authority appealed They said firstly that the award was too high and that the court was not justified to come to the conclusion that Miss Bogle was entitled to anything. Now, you know what I found to be so curious is that Miss Bogle got a judgment of $10.5 million. And I want you to guess how much the vehicle was worth, Um, King. How much do you think the vehicle was worth? She got an award of $10.5 million, but the Toyota Mark II that was seized by the Transport Authority. How much was that, do you think that was worth? Two million, no, 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 $400,000. So the $10.1 million, yeah, the, the Toyota Mark II was actually worth $400,000. So, the, so she, most of the judgment concerned loss of use because she contended that she had to rent a vehicle to replace and because the vehicle was out of her care and custody for so many years, it added up. It was quite a significant $6,000 per day over several years. Anyway, when it went to the Court of Appeal, they reduced the judgment to six point, to six point, um, one, $6.36 million dollars. Right? Um, because some of the... So when you're making a claim for what is called special damages, because remember, it's not the cost of the the value of the motor vehicle that she would be claiming for now. The $400,000 is not in question. But if she would be claiming now that um, she lost the use of her motor vehicle and she had to rent another vehicle during that period, then she would have to tender into evidence receipts. 
And the court found that all of her receipts did not add up to more than $6.9 million. And then they reduced it because she wouldn't need it for the weekends. Only six days per week they gave it to her. So totally it was six point three six million in addition to the four hundred thousand for the value of the, the, the motor vehicle. That's for transportation through the time. That's for transportation for throughout the time. No, so that that wouldn't fall that wouldn't be a consequential loss. Whether you have a vehicle or not, you still have to pay lunch money, um <laughs> King. But um you know, this case is actually very instructive because um, I'm very happy for this judgment because it shows that, you know, our courts are still keeping, you know, our various um, transport authority um, personnel honest in terms of, you know, they're only being entitled to stop motor vehicles if they have reasonable cause. You know, um, there are some vehicles that we associate with taxi, um, the taxi business in um, Jamaica. One such vehicle is the um, Toyota Pro Box, right? Or what we call in Portland, the Deporty, that Toyota, that old Toyota Corolla. Is that, is that a Toyota Corolla, Cassidy? The, the, what we call the deportee. It's, it's an old Toyota the, um, Corolla, right? They call it the deportee vehicle. But simply because you are driving a vehicle which is a, associated with that, 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 um, that stigma of being used for, for taxi work, or maybe because she was driving an old Toyota Mark II, you know, the transport authority associated that vehicle with the fact that she might have been operating a, a public passenger vehicle, but they had no proof. And then it was just so, the way that they approached her as well, to actually collide with her vehicle. And what was so curious about this case as well is that the transport authority, they lost custody of her vehicle. For so many years, they could not account for where the vehicle was. Yes, and um, in court, they were not able to state with any certainty what had happened to that motor vehicle. You know, and the Court of Appeal affirmed um, and confirmed the judgment of the Supreme Court. And um, Amy Hyacinth Bogo walked away with a judgment of over $6.5 million and her vehicle is only worth $400,000. So this is instructive for our, um, our transport authority officials and the police who seize vehicles that it can actually put quite a dent in the government's pockets if they are acting unreasonably and without you know real cause, sufficient cause to be stopping vehicles and to be seizing vehicles and not making um, proper provisions you know in place to ensure that these vehicles are kept safely you know i also want to say for um perhaps some taxi drivers who might be listening that if your vehicles are seized by the transport authority and um you are charged like miss bogle was for you know um failure to have a ppv um, failure to have a road license then um you don't have to wait for the matter to be con concluded before the court before you make an application for the transport authority to release your vehicle you can make an interim application an interim means an in the meantime application in the meantime, you make an application before the court and you indicate to the court, you know, um, that this is your, you were not operating a taxi. Even if you were operating a taxi, it is prejudicial um, to you um, because the, the storage fees, because, you know, you have to pay both the seizure fees as well. And it's a per diem charge, you know, the pound fees, they charge storage per day. You know, um, so you can make an application for um, the release of your vehicle even before the matter is heard. And when you make this application, this application is made and it is supported by a statutory declaration, which is um, signed by you as the car owner. 
um, or the person from whom the vehicle was seized, because I know that some of you are driving for other people. And I'm not encouraging any of our taxi drivers to be operating um, robot taxis either. But in the event that you find yourself in that situation, you know, the law has provision and recourse for you in terms of making an application to release. So you would sign a statutory declaration supported by that application, which is witnessed by a justice of the peace, which is heard by a judge, and um, of course you would still have to pay the pound fees and the storage fees but there would be some mitigation in terms of how much you would be required to pay if you apply before the matter is heard you know a matter can take three weeks you know they might say oh do you know this Sometimes officers or transport authority um, officials, they go on vacation, they might be stationed somewhere, they are not able to come to court, and it might be prejudicial to you to have to wait so long for the matter to be heard and tried. So in the meantime, you can make an application to have your vehicle released. Okay, um, and this applies not just for our taxi drivers, but it can apply to you and I as well, because in this particular case, Miss Bogo was not in fact operating a taxi. So you might have the misfortune, if you want to look at it that way, of just driving a vehicle that might have that stigma, as you said, King, but it's not in fact a taxi. You know, um, you can have recourse. Again, our numbers are 876-453. One four 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 and nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. Again, our numbers are eight seven six four five three one four four four, or if you're overseas, nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. Let me hear from you. What do you think about Kemar Bailey um, possibly facing charges? Is that something that you would support listeners? Do you think that he should face charges for trying to escape the quarantine um, facilities? Um, to send a strong message perhaps to persons who might actually have the COVID-19 to make an example of him king, possibly. That, that's an argument that some persons would say, hey, the government really should um, explore... Um, you know, causing him to face charges for what he did. Now, in relation to the Transport Authority's illegal seizure of Miss Bogo's motor car and held it in custody for over eight, nine years, and they're still not able to account for it in 2020 since um, February 15th, 2011. What do you think about that? Um, are you pleased to hear of the Court of Appeals ruling concerning um, this judgment in favor of Miss Bogo. And I just want to say to you as well that, you know, um, you get a receipt book if you have been dispossessed of your vehicle, whether it's in a motor vehicle accident, um, maybe against um, a, a, a Jamaican citizen or the transport authority in this particular case, you get a receipt book and you make sure you record all of your expenses. If you have to rent a vehicle, and sometimes we have these informal situations where it might not be a formal rental company, but you, you might know somebody who operates that business. You know, we're a very informal society like that and they rent you their vehicle, but they might not have a business per se. You can purchase a, per, a, a, a receipt book and have them sign, you know, to those receipts so that you have a record that in the event that the matter should go to court, that you have, you know, just a precise record of the expenses that you had to incur. And I mean, of course, if it goes over an extended period of time, as it did for Miss Bogle, you might find yourself with millions of dollars in special damages. So this is very instructive that receipts actually matter, you know, and um, it can make the difference between an award for 10 million and one for six. So keep your receipts. Now, um, I want to hear from you again, um, listeners. Our numbers are 876-453-1444. You're very quiet this evening. Is everybody in hiding because of Corona? And 954-338-7973. Um, you know, you know the Bible says something very interesting in Second Timothy 
1 and verse 7, the Bible says that, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This evening, I want to encourage you to live in faith rather than fear. The statistics are, are in our favor. You know, only 160,000 or so persons have contracted the corona and there are preventative measures that you can take. But fear is crippling and fear is unhealthy as well. So you are not positioning yourself into your best advantage, in your best interest for your health if you're allowing yourselves to be overcome by fear. Yeah, fear can make you paranoid. And I see that quite a number of our Jamaicans are responding in this kind of, you know, this kind of hysterical um, kind of way, you know, and that will not help us. It will not help us at all. We have to be very, very um, deliberate in how we approach this thing. You know, I've actually heard of situations, you know, you have you ever heard of somebody, for example, contracting cancer? Like, you know, they got a diagnosis for cancer. And a doctor will tell them that, you know, you've, you probably had cancer for years, but as soon as a person finds out, it takes a downward spiral for the worse because it's a mind thing. It's what you think. You know, even the Bible again says it, that as a man thinketh, thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you think health and wellness, you will be healthy and well. But if you think that you are sick, if you are afraid of corona, then you will be overcome by it. You don't want to be overcome um, by corona and you don't have to be. Good afternoon, Charmaine. Thank you for joining us. After the break, we're going to, he should be charged. Charmaine believes that Kemar Bailey should be charged for seeking to escape the, um, the quarantine facilities. I suppose he did not want to be contained. He was coming from the United States of America, and apparently he was exhibiting certain symptoms. Um, but, you know, we're in the flu season right now, so it might... He, he wasn't suspected of having corona, but they wanted to eliminate that possibility. Yeah, and he wanted to see his... But I am saying, though, if the government thought it, if the government thought it worthy to quarantine him, that woman is well brave. You would have said that, Cassidy? She is well brave. Love. Mm. Love shouldn't put your life in jeopardy, though. Love should not put your life in jeopardy. Our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Now, this evening, we will be joined by another doctor. Her name is... Dr. Anna K. Harvey, and she will be sharing with us about the novel coronavirus or the COVID-19. Now, she is a medical officer with the Southeast Regional Health Authority, and she's also a diet and nutrition advisor. Um, she will be joining us after the break, but I just want to remind you, since indeed this is all things legal and you're tuned in with your host, Janine Lang, attorney at law. You remember last week when we had looked at the, the Public Health Act and the Quarantine Act? Remember that there are certain provisions that we had looked at. And in the Public Health Act, you will remember that the Minister of Health has the power under Section 18 to prohibit the assembly of persons did we see that being played out this week? What assembly of persons were prohibited this week, um, Cassidy? Champs. Champs. Carnival is cancelled until October. Um, they also said that they will not be issuing any licenses for any public, no permits for any public events. So we, last week we, we spoke about it before it came into being, right? That the, the Minister of Health can prohibit the assembly of persons, right? I hear also that horse racings um, have also been cancelled. Another thing under Section 19 of um, the Public Health Act concerned the closure of public schools that we looked at last week. Have we seen that this week? In fact, today it became effective that all public schools are closed for 14 days um, 
until further notice right so so last week when we looked at the public health act and the quarantine act we were already prepared for some of the measures that the government can take pursuant to our existing laws to protect and to contain the spread of this virus you know um now we also looked at the quarantine act and the possibility for the minister um well the medical officer being the chief medical officer um being able to enter upon private prem um, premises and this also in they said includes the access in section 20 it includes um ships and airplanes you know aircraft now i think it was today that the prime minister made a statement that if you feel that you are experiencing symptoms, do not transport yourself to the hospital. They have created special 888 numbers, toll-free numbers that you can call. And you call these numbers and persons will attend upon your premises and make a decision whether or not. Because as I said before, a lot of what is going to be happening in the coming weeks concerns or minds I've been coughing for, for weeks. I mean, last week I was coughing and sneezing in, in court. And uh, Cassidy, I do not have the corona. I do not have the corona, right? Really, King and Cassidy, would you believe, listeners, that these two men are scorning me, are scorning me in this studio? <laughs> The W Health Organization also says that it is not airborne, right? And I'm not sneezing and I'm not coughing. But the fact of the matter is that it is it is the flu season right now, right? So, um, you know, it, it is it is possible for persons to be coughing, sneezing at this particular time. And it doesn't mean that they have the corona. But persons, you know, if anything happens right now they're going to think it is and that's why the government is trying to kind of contain it so they'll 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 um prefer if you stay at home call in the numbers they'll do some elimination um exercises and come to a determination as to whether or not you need medical treatment when we come back from the break i will give you the number that you're supposed to call all right um so I don't want us to be afraid of this um, of this corona. It is largely preventable. The doctor will be addressing um, some of the steps and the tips that we can take to keep ourselves safe. And the government has already embarked on some preventative measures. And we just have to um, to do what we can to prevent contraction of the virus. We're up on our break. Um, before we go, I just want to give you the numbers again, because when we come back, we will be joined by Dr. Anna K. Harvey. Our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Soon come back. Join your host, Janine Lang, on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Architects, draftsmen, and surveyors, get your drawings printed in high-quality professional standards. We can satisfy your printing needs. Whether it is for presentation to your clients or for submitting building and subdivision application, make it VJ Printing Services. Whether drawing by hand or with computer-aided softwares, we will plot your negatives and print the copies as you need. We do high-quality white paper printing that is water-resistant and never fades, unlike traditional blueprint. For more information, call VJ Printing at 893. 2266 
Hardcore Twang Master Swag, the ultimate party animal broke out drink. Made from real Jamaican rum and fruit juice. Flavors available, June plum, sorrel, fruit punch, orange, and pineapple. Swag, like a party animal, best consumed over ice, must be 18 years and older to drink. Drink responsibly. Contact us today at 876-348-6183 for more information. One minute, cause on a Friday night, me have a tune in to Real Talk on Stars 96 FM. Me and you have questions about love, birds, and the bees. Not to mention the ticks and the fleas. So you try tuning in on a Friday night between 9 and 12 for Real Talk. At the show, we discuss everything real and nothing idea. For the best quality in sound reinforcement and backlining, native audio. We have professional engineers with over 20 years of experience. So call us and we'll take care of your parties, wedding receptions, barbecues, conferences, and small stage shows. Crystal clear sound, native audio. Our prices are the best. Call us at 871-5212. That's 871-5212. Native audio. We make your events audible. 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 Planning a party, club night out, stage show, a gospel concert, or even a business sales event? Let Styles FM be a part of your promoting tool. Take advantage of our low-priced promotion packages with commercials, interviews, giveaways, reviews, and much more. We have special offers when you mix and match and bundle your options. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Styles FM for the most effective way to explore your marketing dollar. Join your host, Janine Lang, on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Welcome back, listeners. You are listening to All Things Legal with Janine Lang, attorney at law. Our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Again, our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. You know, um, this evening is a medical legal program. We will be looking at legal matters through the eyes of medicine in view of this coronavirus um, crisis. And joining us this evening is Dr. Anna K. Harvey, and she will be joining us to share concerning the novel coronavirus or the COVID-19. She is a medical officer with the Southeast Regional Health Authority. She is also a diet and nutrition advisor. I want you to send in your questions or comments for the doctor. Our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Good evening, Dr. Harvey. Good evening, folks. Now, Dr. Harvey, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, Dr. Harvey, you have to speak a little louder so we can hear you. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, so I, I want you, Dr. Harvey, to just provide a brief description of the virus. All right. So coronavirus or corona derived from crown, it's a part of the what we call the coronaviridae family, which is a single-stranded family of RNA viruses. Now, it is known as a, as a zoonotic virus, meaning that it's transmitted between animal and people. Mm-hmm. However, the novel coronavirus is a new strain that has not been previously found in people. Now, it is transmitted through droplet infection. That is, if you cough or sneeze, or your hands and so the feet come into contact on the surfaces where the virus is on. 
unarmed located, right? So persons present, they can be asymptomatic, meaning they don't have any symptoms at all. In that case, they are a carrier mm -hmm. and they don't know. Or persons may have mild symptoms. The worst case scenario is death, right? Now, common symptoms is, is typical flu symptoms. For example, your fever, cough, yeah. difficulty breathing, headache, sore throat, or just a general feeling of feeling unwell, right? Mm -hmm. Now, symptoms may develop within two days to about two weeks following the exposure to the virus. Mm -hmm. Now, there are persons who are at higher risk than normal. We need to look at persons such as the elderly, persons right. who have serious chronic medical conditions, for example, heart disease, uncontrolled diabetes, lung disease, you smokers, persons affected with HIV, persons with cancer on immunosuppressive agents. Those are agents that are used to suppress your immune system, for example, steroids, in the case of patients who have lupus, and even severe stress, right? Right. And how we test for this virus is that we take samples from the nose, swabs, um, some you, from you the take, nose. You take nose. samples from where? The nose. The nose. Or, right. Or secretions from the cough right. and from the throat. Or we can do blood tests to diagnose the coronavirus infection. Right. Now, of course, during this time, many other flu viruses can present in a similar pattern of coronavirus. But as doctors, we err on the side of caution and still screen them. Right. Now, there are some preventative measures that I would like to elaborate on. Currently, there is no vaccine available, but we advise that person follow the following tips. Oh, just hold on a second there, um, doctor. So yes. they, they, you, you mentioned before that it's from the corona family. So um, right. there are other illnesses which are coronaviruses as well. Right. Like the, the flu or the common cold would be a, a coronavirus as well. Well, not necessarily a coronavirus, but present in similar fashion but, in terms of symptoms and signs. Right, but you mentioned from the corona family. So what, yes. what other viruses would come from that corona family? You have another virus called the severe acute respiratory syndrome virus. Yes. Um, one called the Egyptian virus and several other more that present in the similar fashion. But those are normally, those normally affect animals. Okay. But what is being said now is that the novel coronavirus is the first one that has been found in people. Okay. Okay. And you had very comprehensively set out um, certain symptoms of the virus. Um, or listeners, um, I just want to go back to that um, because some of those symptoms, they are so similar to what we're accustomed to with the flu. You know, right. um, so you had mentioned that it's really for a doctor to eliminate that person as to whether or not they're actually experiencing um, symptoms associated with the corona or yeah. with a common cold or a flu. Is that correct? Right. We have to screen them just to rule out that. Right. So give me again some of the symptoms of the corona. Okay. So symptoms include fever, fever. Cough, Right. right. Mm -hmm. Difficulty breathing, headaches, sore throat, and just the general feeling of unwellness. Some persons may have joint pains as well, mm -hmm. and atypically, some persons might have symptoms of diarrhea, which is not common. But right. just to mention for completeness, yes. that that also is a presentation in light of all. That's how all our most viral illnesses present atypically. And in terms of severe cases, um, would pneumonia um, feature as well for the corona? Yes. Mm -hmm. Pneumonia is the complication. That's like the end stage there. That is, that is what we worry about. When persons are having coughing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, we encourage them to go straight to the emergency room. Right, right. Okay, so the symptoms, they fall on a spectrum ranging from mild to severe then. Right. Very right. well. Now you, you were you were raising the issue of treatment options. You mentioned that there is not currently a vaccine, but what treatment options are currently available? 
Now, the treatment options that are currently available is mostly on a symptomatic basis. Yes. We treat the symptoms and it's supportive care. Right. Right? Um, just to touch on treatment, I recommend persons to follow the New START acronym, right? Get your nutrition optimized. And how you do this, have a diet rich in fruits. You get your vitamin C, which is good for immunity. Yes. Your berries, which contain antioxidants, as well as your cruciferous vegetables, for example, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts. They are rich in antioxidants that is good to challenge the flu. And listeners, I want to I want to just interject here that Dr. Yes. Harvey is a diet and nutrition advisor. So listen carefully concerning these dietary um you know suggestions. Continue, Dr. Harvey. Okay. Also, you have a diet rich in anti-inflammatory agents. What I mean, things like your turmeric, your garlic, excellent in tackling the flu and fever-like symptoms, right? Um, there are other natural What about ginger? Well. Ginger and garlic? Yeah, man. Ginger is excellent as well. Both mm-hmm. the ginger and garlic are potent. Right. Very good for fever symptoms. Uh, there, and also, in addition, zinc is, is known to be toxic to coronavirus on contact. You can find zinc in your nuts. Uh, you can find zinc in your supplements as well. Yes. And additionally, there is a there is a supplement now that New England Journal of Medicine reported. The NAC or N-acetyl-15. Yes. It is known to boost your glutathione levels in the blood. Therefore, creating you create antibodies against the NAC against the sorry the, the corona flu, the coronavirus. It has another additional function as well. It thins the mucus and helps your lungs to clear the mucus. It makes it thinner so you can clear it easier. That's very. That's a very good. Let me just um, repeat that um, for our listeners. So listeners, you're hearing that zinc, zinc that you can get from nuts or you can get a zinc supplement, it is toxic to the corona. It kills the corona. We want to kill corona, right? We want to kill corona in Jamaica. We don't want corona to kill me, right, King? So we want the corona to, to die. So we, we, I want to encourage you to either get your zinc from nuts as well and from other um, food items as well as you can get zinc supplements from the pharmacy. And the doctor also, Dr. Harvey also mentioned NAC. Um, NAC is an over-the-counter drug. Um, it's N dash if you're writing down it's n dash a c e t y l c y s t e i n e now you remember that the corona is a respiratory condition so it can affect breathing and she says that it will thin the mucus in your respiratory tract so you so NAC is very useful for that purpose um doctor i also wanted to um because you mentioned about mucus are there any foods that contribute to mucus that you, we would want to avoid yes i recommend avoiding dairy simply because dairy is known to stick on mucus and create make it more difficult and challenging to breathe. We know that mucus provides a rich medium for bacteria to grow and spread. So avoid foods, dairy, milky products, your baked goods, your um, butter, cheese, all those things that you, it's recommended that you avoid because oh. they're mucus producing. Okay, perfect. Um, we're so grateful for these tips in terms of how to um, boost or or immune system. You know, Jamaicans are worried, Dr. Harvey. Um, would, would you say that this is a death sentence even for persons who have existing health conditions? You know, um, this is something, based on what you have said, that can be managed and doesn't have to be a death sentence. Is, is this your position, doctor? Yes, I believe so. The only persons that we have to be a bit more aggressive is those persons I mentioned who are at risk or elderly persons, persons with heart disease, lung disease, or diabetes that are not controlled and 
patients who have cancer who get in chemo, mm-hmm. those are the persons who we have to be more aggressive in our management too. But they too can recover as well. So it's not a death sentence at all. It's just depending on how severe their symptoms are and how they're managing generally. I mean, I think the mind is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. If you believe that you will heal, believe me, you will. It depends on your disposition, I believe, as well. That, That contributes as well. Okay, so you you hear the doctor saying it, listeners, positive thoughts, positive thoughts will lift you into wellness. Now, um, doctor, let's, I want to talk about, uh, we've been talking a lot about diet, but in terms of certain hygienic practices, you want to touch on some of those that we can do to avoid contracting the virus? Sure. I encourage persons to wash their hands. Soap and water is the ideal agent that is used to cleanse your hands, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to be washing your hands with soap for at least 20 to 30 seconds, and you will teach your children to do the same as well, right? Next, if soap and water is not available to you, I recommend purchasing an alcohol-based sanitizer and it must be labeled over 70% because that is known to be effective in terms of wiping away the pathogens, right? I recommend washing hands after coughing and sneezing, before and after caring for someone who is ill, and even before preparing foods and before eating as well. You need to also cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze, and then you discard it in the trash. Okay. Another thing, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands because contamination with those mucous membranes encourages spread of the virus. I avoid know. Close, yes, continue. Uh, yes. Close contact, sharing cups, or sharing utensils with persons who are sick. Please, I emphasize, clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces and objects, such as your toys, doorknobs, especially if you have someone who is known to have these symptoms around you. Now, if you should fall ill on the milder side, you need to stay home, except that you have some emergent complications, such as your breathing short, your chest is hurting you, you go straight to the emergency room. Right. And ensure that if you have animals or pets or you live on a farm, Please wash hands after contact with those animals or visiting zoos or farms or agricultural fairs. Mm -hmm. And avoid contact with animals who are sick. Okay, the the World Health Organization has said that even when you are asymptomatic, meaning that you're not showing, um, I'm going to spell the word again shortly, Carrie Ann, but the, the, the World Health Organization has said that even when you're not showing symptoms, that you could, you could actually be, um, you can transmit the infection um, for the virus. So, so would you urge that persons practice these? you know, these tips that you just mentioned in terms of washing your hands, whether or not you're around persons who are exhibiting those symptoms. Sure. Right. Okay, perfect. So we're, whether or not you're around persons who you, you suspect to have the condition, you're still to be, um, be, be, be very precautious concerning um, this virus. I want to also ask you, doctor, what would you say is the possibility of reinfection from this virus? Now, you can, if you have been initially infect, infected with the virus, with that particular strain, mm-hmm. you will develop immunity, meaning antibodies against that same strain. But if a new strain that is totally different from the initial strain, you become infected, then there's a chance that you will get reinfected again, showing sense, because you're infected with a different strain. Okay. Right, so their immunity is only for the strain that affected you in the first place. Um, and they they have identified new strains to this corona. Not at the moment. No, okay. They have I- only what we are aware of the COVID nineteen. 
Okay, so so listeners, I believe somebody had asked last week concerning reinfection. Um, if you do get it, then your body naturally builds up an Im- immunity by producing antibodies. So your your chances of reinfection would be very slim. You know, I I noticed that when you were giving your tips, um, doctor, that you never mentioned um, gloves and mask, and quite a number of or. Um, population, you know, people, I mean, in the towns, people are buying gloves and masks. You know, what would you say about that? Is that necessary? Okay. Um, My answer is going to be twofold. Now, gloves are designed only for healthcare professionals or persons directly dealing with those with respiratory illnesses. For example, the same coronavirus. However, if a normal person goes on the road and is wearing a mask, the only thing that it can become contaminated and they're just going to sweat the mask off. So I don't recommend a healthy person to be wearing a mask. A mask is only effective covering the patient who is ill. It's for patients who are ill or healthcare workers or persons attending to those to those who are infected. Right. Same other thing with the gloves, right? If you know that you're in direct contact with someone who has the virus, you wear your gloves. But to wear the gloves on the road, it's ridiculous because the gloves can become contaminated as well. <laughs> right. And they're called disposable for a reason. Once you wear them, you discard of them immediately. You don't have the gloves, and then you wash it, wash the gloves off and put it back on again. That is not proper sanitary measures. Right. No, the type of gloves I see these people rocking on the road actually isn't the correct type of gloves to be wearing. I mean, mask, sorry, to be wearing. The type of mask that provides more protection is what we call the N95 mask. Okay. And that is what we healthcare providers wear. That's like a surgical grade. Yes, okay. right. That we wear when we're in contact with somebody with a respiratory illness, an infection, or the coronavirus. Okay, these are very, very useful tips. You're hearing that, listeners? Avoid the mask and the gloves. We don't need them. Um, what other what other um, tips would you like to give to our listeners, um, Dr. Harvey? Okay. Any home Another remedy? Thing. Any home remedy? Because you had mentioned turmeric before. Maybe you could re- repeat some of and garlic and ginger. Um, yes. Yes. Go ahead, Let doctor. Let me recap. Stock up on your vitamin C. You can get that in the form of your fresh fruits. In terms of your berries, that has antioxidant properties. Vitamin D as well is good for immunity. You can spend twenty to thirty minutes in the sun twice a week and supplement with your vitamin D. They gave a concentrate, concentration about, about 5,000 units. So when you go to the pharmacy and you see the vitamin D, you pick the one which is 5,000 units, which is said to be effective. Okay. All right. So, and again, I mentioned zinc being toxic to coronavirus on, t- on contact. Mm-hmm. We mentioned the turmeric and the ginger. Um, just a quick question, I, um, doctor. Apart from the nuts, is there anything that, um, any other food that contains zinc? Fish. Fish. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, listeners. Some fish. <laughs> yes, continue, doctor. Also, I recommend getting sleep. Mm. Six to eight hours a night, right? People underestimate the power of sleep. The time between 10 a.m. and 3 a.m. is when the body is what we call in REM cycle. That cycle is very important because that's where the body repairs itself after a long day. Mm -hmm. So I recommend persons to get the sleep because you can be following your diet, everything to the T. But once you are lacking sleep, you're going to run into problems. And I'm happy that yeah, I'm happy that you mentioned you know these dietary um, you know tips that we could take because I mean you could be washing your hands and washing your face and doing all of these things, but if you're not boosting you know the immune system of your body, then you can still you can actually still it um, get infected. So right. I'm, I'm really grateful for those tips in terms of our diet you know, the dietary changes that we should make. And I know that even as Jamaicans, we love cheese. 
We love yes, cheese and we love addictive. milk. Trust me. Um, I see somebody here writing in. I don't know what you can say about this, but if a if a woman um has the COVID nineteen and she's breastfeeding, would would you say that is recommended? Would that affect the baby? Well, what I recommend is she expresses the the baby's not gonna catch the virus directly from the milk, mm -hmm. but you are to avoid contact with the baby, meaning you have to be isolated because the baby can develop pneumonia, symptoms right. of a flu. Right. So the, the pregnant mother is to be in isolation, and if possible, if she can express, she's to express the milk. Of course, practicing proper hygiene. Make sure that the bottle that she's expressing is sterilized. Those kind of important measures before the baby is fed. Have a nurse or someone else take care of the baby but the mother needs to be isolated oh. to prevent the spread to the baby okay um final comments as we wrap up dr harvey is there anything okay. else that you'd like to share sure i need to also emphasize that exercise is good for the immune system as well mm -hmm. and for well-being so i do make ensure that i you know encourage persons to exercise as well and drink lots of water if you know you're having flu-like symptoms too another important thing is to hydrate 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 it helps with the fever as well so in summary coronavirus i it's not you're not to worry about it but just take just be very smart with how you are managing things in terms of hygiene hygiene is very important arm of protection right and um course, doctor you had mentioned before the the new start and i realized right. that you had yes you had you touched some of the the new start the the letters in that acronym but i just want you to just comprehensively go through what the new new start stands for if you don't mind all right so new start is an acronym and it stands the n is for nutrition e for exercise the w is for water s for sunshine, T for temperance, everything in balance, um, no stress, A for air, get your fresh air in the mornings, R is rest, get your good night's rest, and T is trust in God. And once you do put all these principles in place, you'll have no thing to fear with this coronavirus. Oh, thank you so much, doctor. Um, after you've heard all of this, listeners, do you not feel more at rest, at peace? Thank you so much, Dr. Harvey, for joining us. And, um, You're welcome. Just, just before you leave, let me just see if our listeners have any other questions. Listeners, the doctor will be leaving shortly. Do you have any questions before she leaves? Um, before she leaves okay so we don't have any more questions dr harvey thank you so much for joining us and um, we thank you so much for for sharing okay no problem okay thank you all right now listeners i um carrie ann had asked had asked concerning the the well zinc the doctor had mentioned but i think carrie ann is asking concerning the knack the knack the NAC is spelled N dash A C E T Y L C Y S T E I N E. All right, so it's N A still cysteine. Okay, so you it's an over the counter um, drug that you do not need a prescription for. Both the zinc supplement, which the doctor says is toxic to the corona, as well as this NAC, which I just spelled, are things that you can get over the counter at the pharmacy. And of course, we don't just want to treat symptoms, we want to boost our immunity. And the doctor had given very, very comprehensive tips in terms of the foods that we should eat, right? You can also get zinc from fish as well as from nuts. She said that you should be eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. 
right? So we want to do these things. Wash your hands carefully for 20 to 30 seconds. Last week, Cassidy and I had discussed that when you wash your hands for 20 to 30 seconds, you sing the happy birthday song twice. And you're washing in between your fingers. You're washing your thumb. You're washing your hands thoroughly. So it's not to just put your hand under the water, you know, and let the, the water just run over your hands. And she said that soap and water is best okay and um try to avoid touching your mouth and your eyes right because the virus is spread by droplets importantly she also shared that we do not need gloves and masks because these are actually used by her healthcare f- um, professionals right and even the ones that we're using are not really hygienic because they get dirty they get contaminated and we might sweat them off which creates another problem We're not buying the surgical grade ones, which would really protect us from the corona, right? So let's us leave the mask and the gloves for persons who are actually infected. It's fashionably wrong. Um, Sadie is asking for a repeat of the spelling of NAC. NAC is N dash, or you can leave out the dash, N A C E T Y. L C Y S T E I N E. And remember that she says that NAC actually um, is, is an antioxidant. It helps to thin the mucus in the respiratory tract. Now, listeners, you're not going to take the NAC now and go and buy pizza or go and buy zinger with cheese. Or what else have cheese? Bun and cheese, right? Or milk, supplegen. And we have to just take a break from those things because those things would be counteracting the work of the knack to be breaking up the mucus. I remember that that is where the corona is problematic when it affects that respiratory um, tract, right? So I'm going to spell the knack again. It's N, N as in Nancy. Several listeners are asking for the spelling of NAC. N as in Nancy. A as in Apple. C as in Cat. E as in Egg. T as in... What? Table. (laughs) Okay. Y as in Yes. L as in Love. C as in cat, Y as in yes, S as in, what is S? What can I say for S? Styles FM. (laughs) T as in toe, E as in egg, I as in ice cream, N as in Nancy, E as in egg. Okay, once again for the final time. And if you haven't gotten the spelling, then I'm going to ask Cassidy to just text it to you for next week because we're at the end of our program. It's N N A C E T Y L C Y S T E I N E. Okay. So listeners, you know, at the beginning we shared um This text that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. But the Bible further says that, you know, a merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. If you feel like you are sick, Karen, you can get the knack at the pharmacy over the counter. You do not need a prescription. The doctor says it as well. It's all in the mind. If you feel that you are sick, then you will be sick. I found it interesting that the last letter of the acronym New Star, she said, trust in God. We want to live in faith and not fear. Fear has a tendency to make us even more sick. We don't want to be living in fear. We are strong people, Jamaicans, you know, and um, God has done so much for us. And all we have to do is to cooperate with him. You know, he himself even says in 1 John that he desires above all things 
that we should be in good health even as our soul prospers, right? So God desires good health for us. So if we just follow the instructions that he has given in terms of, you know, taking care of our body temples, eating well, drinking lots of water, getting enough rest, exercising, these are things that we should really be doing on a regular, then we will be um, safe from this virus. Thank you so much for joining us this week. It was my pleasure to share with you. All things being equal, join me next week for All Things Legal. Until then, take care and keep healthy. Bye-bye. Join your host, Janine Lang, on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m.